Hey guys, what's up? So today we are going to be doing a Learner's Theater of Blood guide. Um, and this is going to be from the Meleer's perspective. And I'm with the boys. I'm here with Cigar and Kimbo and Invictus. And the four of us are going to run some Learner Theater of Blood. And we're all bringing very budget setups. You can see from my inventory right there. Every one of us, we're bringing Boyd, Note Sites, no Tebow's. These are 500 mil setups. These are roughly 500 mil setups. And we're all going to be doing that to show learner perspectives, learner strategies, and how we can beat the theater of blood for our very first time. So um, here's my gear set up, right? I have those Urania boots and a light bear. Otherwise, everything's really standard. Um, void, whip, defender. Um, I am bringing an Avernic defender, but you can just bring a dragon defender. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, we are going to join Invictus Party. He is the South Mage, and South Mage should be the party leader for these four-man raids. And we're going to pot up and send it, guys. And we'll talk about every boss as we go through it. Um, we're not going to be using any advanced strategies. These are all going to be extremely learner-friendly strategies. Strategies that anyone can use in their very first run. Uh, and their first early, maybe 10, 15, 20 KC in the Theater of Blood. And I want to point out some things before we start. Is that uh, Invictus is the party leader, like I said. He's our South Mage, and the order does matter. So you can see Invictus is going to be front. He's first. And then we're going to have Cigar. He's our North Mage. Kimbo's our Ranger. And I'm the melee DPS. And you can see from that order of the party up there, it is important. It does matter. Um, so we're going into the Theater of Blood. And the first room is going to be Maiden. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop one item in front. I'll drop a potion or an angler. And we're all going to get up to the gate and start spam clicking it. And Invictus is going to engage it. So the South Mage will engage, and this will get us all in on the same tick. So check it out. We're all spam clicking, and we're in. And we're going to start with a Dragon Warhammer spec into a BGS spec. And that'll lower her defense. Right? And at this point, we're all going to be whipping the boss. And... I, as the melee DPS, my role is to get her below 70% health. We want to get her below 70% health, and that'll spawn her first set of crabs. We call them 70s because they spawn at 70% health. And as soon as those 70s spawn, boom, we go and attack that first one that's really close to us while the mages are busy freezing. And uh, the the melee and the ranger our job is to kill all stragglers so right every lone crab every lone ranger we're gonna go take them down while the mages deal with the clump or the cluster which is what they're doing right now so as they unfreeze they start walking toward the boss and if they hit the boss they're gonna empower her a little bit and heal her and they heal her based on how much health the crabs have left so you don't want a full HP crab hitting the boss but if a low HP crab manages to sneak through and hit that boss, it's okay. But the boss is hitting 50s, and that's when the next set of, sp of crabs spawn. So they spawn at sub 50% health, and we do the exact same thing. No fancy techniques. All we do is we finish off the crabs. The mages are going to be the ones freezing the crabs. And once all the stragglers are dead, we let the mages deal with the clump. And the ranger and the melee will get back on the boss, and now we're trying to get her to 30% health. So those crabs spawn at 30, 50, and 70% health, and that'll be all the time. That'll be for every single mating kill, every single run. So once you get the strategy down, it'll be the same. That first boss will be the same every time. And we're just going to go kill those lone rangers again, right? So we're not doing any fancy techniques. There's a technique called 30 skipping, and there's a technique called stacking, and we're not even going to go into depth on any of those strategies for now. We're just going to be focusing on killing those stragglers on the 30s, 50s, and 70s crabs, and then getting back on the boss and finishing her up. We could let that crab go, but why not? It had just one hit. Just take it down. And you can see our special bar is back up, so we can get that claw spec off. We have a little bit more spec left over. We'll swipe that chally, and at this point, we just need the boss to die. So there's not much left in terms of mechanics until the boss goes down. 
and the boss is down boys and we're going on to the second room of the theater of blood which is bloat and before we enter we'll do something called a salve check where we can either call out on voice comms or type out loud right salve check and that reminds us all to put our salve amulet on for bloat because it's going to give us significant dps boost and you want to bring that pink self you can have as many as you want you can make them constantly all you need is that turns lair book and multiple salve amulets and you can have infinite number of pink salves which is what we're all bringing into this raid and one person can enter to start everyone else can stay at the gate but the person who enters kind of begins a uh, bloats timer so you want to stay always on the opposite side of bloat, which is what Cigar is doing right now. And there are techniques called drive-by BGS, which is where you can run straight by him and BGS the boss. But we're not going to be going into that in this video. But what we're going to do is we're going to chally, and then we're going to throw three whips. So here we go. One, two, three. And then we'll get that second chally off, and we're going to book it. We're going to run. And would you want to at least go around the corner? You you definitely want to be around the corner uh, from bloat, but preferably all the way to the other side. And if you do that, chally three whips, chally, uh, you'll most likely always have time to make it to the other side of the boss. And at this point, you just want to stay opposite sides of the boss. The boss can turn, so it can turn unexpectedly. So don't get too close to him, right? But stay as far opposite as you can. If you saw that he just recently turned, you can get a little bit closer, but when he goes down, we're going to go finish him off. And you can see we have a little bit of spec bar back, so we get that claw special off, right? And then we just go back to whipping the boss. And we can hit him five times, which is what we just did, and then we're going to run again. And the boss is back up. So this is what we're going to call a three down bloat, because bloat's going to go down three times before we actually kill the boss. Uh, and in this budget gear setup, you can pretty much bank on that. It will most likely always be a three down bloat unless your DPS just really pops off. But that's what we're getting right here. So at this point, we're just staying opposite side of the boss, waiting for him to go down, dodging that falling meat as we walk. And when the boss goes down, we're just going to go finish him up. So here we go. Run up to that boss, get those last few hits off. Looks like I do have another claw spec, so I can just hit him really fast with that. And the boss is down. And I think that was actually a perfect bloat. So if you play it nice and safe, you're never really worried about flies. You're never really worried about the stomp attack. You're just playing it nice and safe, going for that three down. Uh, you can start playing riskier if you're going for that one down or two down. But if your goal is to just beat the theater of blood, uh, you can go for that three down blow. It really doesn't matter. You're still going to have like a 20, 22, 23 minute run. But we're going into Nilo. And at this point, you want to make sure that you have a stamina potion. And if you didn't bring one in with you like I did, um, you're going to want to buy one from that bank chest after bloat. But our range DPS, he's pot sharing. You can see he actually stared a, shared a stamina potion with us. Uh, so we have that extra run energy for this room. And our goal as melee DPS is simply to kill the white melee crabs. That's our number one and main top priority. So we're running around. We're killing the melee crabs. We don't need a special weapon. We don't necessarily need to bring the ham joint. We don't necessarily need to bring the, um, the swift blade, right? We can just hit him with whip. Uh, we can honestly claw scratch them, but if you have that whip, you might as well just use the whip. Claw scratch is kind of if you have a scythe but didn't, like you couldn't afford uh, a swift blade or you didn't bring a swift blade for some reason, you could just claw scratch them. Uh, but we're using a whip for all of these guys. And like I said, our priority is just to kill the white crabs. And if there's nothing to do, if there's absolutely no white crabs left on the field, we could do a two-way mage swap. We could swap into like a two-way mage swap, which would be just staff and helmet, or maybe even just staff. And we can help the major out a little bit. But for the most part, we are going to be focusing on just the white crabs. And I want to point something out. You can see the numbers that I have above all the crabs. And that's the current wave. So that's the wave that that crab spawned on. So you can see we're on 15 right now. We're on wave 15. And there's 31 waves. So this helps me keep track of what wave I'm on and how much longer is this room going to last. Right? And as the melee DPS... 
um, as the waves get further and further in, so once we start hitting those mid to late 20s and early 30s, there's going to be a lot of crabs on the pillars. And as melee DPS, it's going to be our role to be right on those pillars, right, hitting those white crabs. And you're going to see it's going to be coming up soon, where once we have a lot of crabs on pillars, um, and we're in our melee gear right on top of them, we kind of want to do a flinch. Right, so here we go right there. I kind of do like a little flinch. And I always run back between hits because if the crabs expire, right, the crabs won't stay around for forever. They will eventually pop. And if the crabs expire and you're standing right next to them, they kind of do like a burst damage, uh, which will basically, it'll just chip down your health a little bit. So to avoid that, we can kind of do that little flinch action when we're hanging out directly on the pillar. Other than that, you can see this white one right here. He's hanging out in the middle. He's not necessarily going to a pillar. Uh, he's actually an aggro crab. He's aggressive. Uh, we'll call him aggro. And if you see those crabs in the middle and they're kind of attacking your buddies, uh, you want to take them down as fast as possible because they are doing chip damage to your friends. And if there's two or three aggros all doing chip damage to the team all at the same time, um, it's going to make everyone take significantly more damage. And you could end up wasting potions or supplies. Uh, we do have that angler, which is nice, but hopefully we can save that and maybe overbrew for either the boss or the, the next room, so to say. But we are on wave 31. You can see there's a 31 right there, and that's the final wave. So at this point, it's just clean up. And if we all stayed on our own rolls and our own crabs, we didn't even really risk any of those pillars falling, even with super budget gear. So we're going to top ourselves all the way up to full HP and we're gonna put that BGS on because when the boss spawns it will always spawn a melee and we are going to drop two BGS specs you can either drop BGS specs or double claws and what we want to do when he changes colors so he's range right now we're gonna always pray first so let's see he went mage we switched mage prayer and then we put our mage gear on and we start attacking but we always want to prioritize the prayer prayer needs to be the very first thing that we swap swap the prayer before the gear right so there we go we go into our mage prayer and then we go into our mage gear and we get two heads off and we start going into now range prayer and range gear and we start getting those heads off and that's all there is to this boss right always switch your prayer first and switch your gear second and you don't need to do the full uh gear swap before you start attacking right you can do a one-way swap a two-way swap a four-way swap whatever you feel comfortable with but the most important thing to do is always change your prayer before you change your gear. Right? You can see right there I actually only did a one-way swap and I even misclicked the helmet. So change your prayer, change your gear, and take down that boss. And as long as you engage the fight with kind of full HP, which is what I did in between the, the time between the last wave and the time that the boss spawned, if you enter the boss with full HP, you really shouldn't have to worry about eating or anything as long as you get your prayer switches off quickly and your gear switches off correctly. But when the boss goes down, we're going into the fourth room, which is Sotasek or Sot. And what we do is we all call, everyone's going to call the corner that they want. So there's four corners of the boss and everyone will call their own corner. So we have Northwest called, Southwest 1, 2, that's what I called. We have Southeast 2, 3. And what the numbers mean, so 1, 2 means that I'm going to use my Dragon Warhammer special on the first phase and the second phase. 2-3 means that he's going to use his Dragon Warhammer spec on the second phase and the third phase. And what we want to do is after we get our spec off, we're going to go on to the boss and we all are standing on our own specific tile. And there's really no need to move from these tiles. We can just camp our tile. If you want to flinch the boss, you can. If you want to put your melee prayer on, you can. But you don't even necessarily need to. See, I'm just camping mage. And that's because the first attack that Soap will always throw when he uses an attack, it will always either be a mage or a melee. He doesn't actually throw range balls. Balls are bounces. Or range balls, I should say, are bounces. So watch. Watch Invictus, right? It hits him, and then it bounced into a black ball, which is the range ball. But when he goes into 66% health... We now have to do the maze, and the important thing is always stand on that first tile. Always show your team that first tile. They know they need to know how to engage the boss, or how to engage the maze. And the third tile, which we're standing on, is safe. And once everyone is on that third tile and we're ready to go, the guy in the nether realm can send it. 
and it's not a race guys we don't need to go fast we don't need to be tick perfect it's more important to have perfect footwork than speedy footwork which is what we did right there so you can see i just did my second um dragon warhammer special attack and we saw earlier someone has already covered the third phase so when we get to third phase someone's going to have um a dragon warhammer special attack to go but yeah when the big ball comes that big red ball we're all going to stack on the head and that'll split the damage evenly amongst everyone so there we go we split the damage and then we hurry up and we get back into our corners and we continue on with the boss and the goal this time is to get him down to 33 percent health and he's going to go into that shadow realm again and we'll go a little more in depth into how the shadow realm works this time so here we go one person is in the shadow realm and he's going to show us that very first tile so there it is we know our first safe tile and then he's going to walk us to the third row so he's going to get us safely to the third row so here we go it's not a race guys no need to go fast and we can hang out here until everyone's ready to go and then he sends it and he doesn't need to send it tick perfectly running two steps at a time every time it's all about going slow and steady and clear for your partners your team right and at this point we just want to finish off the boss when the boss there's nothing else to worry about other than maybe the big red orb and uh just his basic attacks now i'm a little low health right now and it probably would be smart for me to brew up and i'm kind of chancing it and doing a little flinching so you can see how i flinch to avoid melees but honestly if you don't want to stay low hp it's pretty smart to stay high hp we have the supplies we have super combats, we have brews, it's fine to stay high HP because look, I missed an attack, I didn't see that range attack coming, it came right through the boss, and I totally got chanced right there. But luckily, even if I died and threw my chance at the perp, I got the strong boys to carry me through it. So thanks guys, thanks for carrying me through that. I'm lucky I didn't die right there, it was totally chanced. But this is our last supply chest of the raid, and this is where we can fully stock up. So make sure to drop your, drop your half-finished potions, and we're going to use this to fully supply ourselves up. And for these learner raids, I suggest bringing four uh, super restorers. You're going to want to bring four super restorers, and definitely a stamina. You need to make sure that you have a stamina at this point. Bring a couple hard food, which is what I'm grabbing right there. I got two sharks, which are our hard food, and the rest brews. And what we want to do for Zarpus is the goal of this room is to not touch any of our supplies, no matter what. There's no need for us to touch supplies. Nobody should die in this room anyway, but we do not want to touch supplies. And we are going to be using very simple beginner strategies. Everyone is going to be ranging the boss. We're not going to be doing any fancy Zarpus walking. We're not going to be using whip walking or scythe walking or melee Zarpus or whatever you want to call it, right? All of us are just going to be ranged blowpiping the boss. And when the boss starts, all we have to do, phase one is extremely simple, right? We just stand on the exhumes. And I've forgotten to right now, but I'll get it in a sec. You want to open up an inventory spot. So it'd be good for me to drop an item right here or soon. And there we go. We're going to drop that shark because we want that open inventory slot because what we're going to do is we're going to do a dragon warhammer into a bgs when the boss spawns so here we go we're getting ready the boss is going to spawn and we're going to throw our redemption prayer on and our piety and we're going to dragon warhammer the boss there we go and then we're going to bgs the boss there we go and then we run to the perimeter of the room and we hurry up and throw on our ranger and we're going to start blow piping the boss down and it starts to get hectic. It starts to get confusing. There's going to be slime and poison just floating all over the room and flying everywhere. But all you have to do is run two tiles when the boss looks at you. So see, the boss just looked at me. And when he looks at me again, I'm going to run two more tiles. So get ready, right? She's going to look at me soon. And when he looks at me, we're going to run two more tiles. Boom. And that's all we have to do. It looks confusing, it looks hectic, but all you have to do is move two tiles away every time the boss looks at you. See, there we go again, two more tiles. And we can just blow pipe the boss down. And there's multiple movement patterns that you can do. You can see everyone's kind of doing their own style of movement patterns, but for me, I like to just move two tiles away every time the boss looks at me. And we're looking to get him down to about 30% health, maybe a little below 30% health. And at that point, he's gonna scream above his head. He'll say screech, and he enters the final phase of the fight. So we're getting there, we're almost there, and he'll be screeching any second now, right? So we're watching his health, and there it is, he just screeched. So then we run in, and we put our melee gear on, our whips. 
And all we want to do is we cannot attack him if he's looking in our quadrant. Right? So he switches quadrants about every two hits, especially if you're using a whip. It's every two hits. Uh, Scythe, you can't always get two hits off at a time. But what you want to do is you want to kind of preemptively move to where he was looking, right? So we're moving to where he was because he obviously can't look at the same pot spot twice. He's always going to be turning. So, right? So we get those hits off. And we just don't want to hit him when he's looking at us. And we're actually going to see what happens when he does look at us. Because we're going to whip him right here. And he slaps us a huge 77. Invictus decided to use a claw spec right there when he was looking at him. And it's an instant one shot. And if you hit him with a claw spec, a chally, a scythe, or any multi-hit weapon or special attack when he's looking at you, it will be an instant one shot. So be careful about it. Go slow. It's not a race. We're not trying to speed run here. We're just trying to get our very first theater of blood cases, right? But the boss is down, and you can see that there was a staff on the ground, and someone has to pick up the staff. You cannot go through this door. You must not go through this door before someone has picked up the staff. Otherwise, you'll never kill Verzik. You absolutely need the staff for Verzik. And everyone's going to be sharing the staff at Verzik. So Verzik is a three-phase fight. And every phase is completely different from the last. But when we enter the room, we're going to drop a couple bonus supplies on the ground. And the reason why we drop those supplies, there's two reasons why we do it. One, we're opening up some inventory slots so we can hold the staff when it's our turn. Or hold our two-handed weapon when we need to. But two, in case we die, because we're learning or because we just made a mistake or for whatever reason, in case we die... Our potions are on the ground for our buddies to pick up so that they can finish the fight and carry us through to the end. And that's why we drop those potions on the ground. Uh, it's not necessarily for our own benefit. It's to help the team in case mistakes happen. Because they do. And this boss is hard. And when we're learning this boss, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And especially as a learner. And if you die and you have supplies on your person, they won't drop to the ground. So we drop a couple extra bonus potions on the ground to help our team in case something goes wrong but this is actually where the orb order comes in handy see that top left corner top left corner of my screen we can actually see the order that the party was formed and that's going to be for this part right here so invictus he was our south mage and you can see him up there he's holding the staff right now and he's going to be the first person who gets those staff hits off on the boss and he's going to use two staff special attacks they use 35 percent of your special attack energy per hit and he's going to get the first two hits off. And then he's going to drop the staff. He's physically going to unequip the staff or re-equip his whip or whatever. And he's going to drop that staff on the ground. And someone else is going to pick it up. And we're going to go in the order of the orbs top left. Or rather the order of the party. So we put our mage gear on or put our mage prey on. And we're going to get ready to whip that boss. Right in his melee DPS. We're going to get four hits off. One, two, three, four. And we're going to run behind that pillar. And at this point, we're swapping who gets that staff, right? So we can run up and get two heads off. One, two. And Kimbo had the staff, and now it's our turn. So we're going to pick up that staff, equip it really quick. And we're going to get two special techs off. One, two. And then we get back behind the pillar and drop the staff on the ground. And after me, because I'm melee DPS, I was fourth orb order. Uh, it resets, so Invictus has the staff now, and then no Cigar is going to pick up the staff, so now Cigar's turn is to hold it. And we can see that that pillar is getting pretty low, right? So he's going to drop it to Kimbo, and it's hard to tell right now, is the pillar going to go down, or is it going to stay up? And we didn't know, right? So Kimbo's just going to hold on to the staff. Right, so if that pillar is low, just hold on to the staff because now we need to switch. And you don't want to accidentally drop that staff on the ground behind the dead pillar and now no one can go and pick it up. Or they're going to have to tank a hit to go and pick it up, right? So don't drop the staff behind a pillar that's almost about to die. It's better to just hold on to it, bring it to that next pillar, and continue on with our rotations over there. But the boss is going down. She's at 3% health. And I have a choice right here. I have 35% special bar coming up right now. And I could either special attack the boss and kill her right away. But that would drain my special attack bar. Or we could just take it nice and slow and continue on with our cycle like we already have going. And the boss is down and I saved my special attack. 
And at this point, we're going to go back to our corner that we had at Sotaseg and Zarpus, right? We keep that same corner. I called Southwest Pursuit, and we're going to end up meleeing this boss down. And the way I like to think of how to do the whip walk is every time that that ball hits the ground, right? So she throws those cabbages, and they hit the ground, and every time it hits the ground, I walk back. So when she spawns those crabs, you want to get off the boss and just focus on popping the crabs. You can either pop them with their attack style, specifically blue for mage or range for green. Um, but once those crabs are down, we get back on the boss and we're just doing this whip walk, right? So you can see, watch the, the, um, the cabbage splats on the ground and I walk back. So here we go. We're going to be watching for it. The cabbage splats on the ground and I walk back. And splats on the ground and we walk back. And she's on a four tick cycle, right? So if the cabbage splashing isn't doing it for you, you can always watch your four tick visual metronome. And that might help you get the timing down for the scythe walking. But this is probably the hardest part to learn about Verzik. The final boss is learning how to do this melee walk. And it's different for scythe and it's different for whip. Uh, the timing is just a little bit different just because of the attack speed of the weapons. But we need to learn how to do um, Verzik walking. And the goal for a learner, especially if you're the only learner on the team, is you really want to make it past phase two. Because it, the, DPS, the DPS that you offer as an individual on phase two is huge. But when Verzik drops below 35% health, she goes into like a mage phase. So this is where we put our mage prey on. We need to have our mage prey on from this point on. And if we get hit with one of those cabbages from this point on, it's going to do double damage because we're not praying prey uh, range. We have to camp prey mage at this point. But when she spawns these red cramps, you don't necessarily have to kill them. You just have to get them low. Right, so that was low enough, but Invictus got that lasted off, which is fine. It's fine to kill the crabs, right? But you don't have to kill the crabs. You just have to get them low. Because if she, if you don't attack the crabs and they're up for too long, she'll pop them and use them to heal. So the crabs actually heal the boss after a set amount of time. They'll burst and heal the boss for the remainder of their health. But our goal is to get the boss below 10% health. So you can see right now she's at 11% health, so we're not safe yet. We have to finish off those crabs. If she was below 10% health, we could just skip the crabs and nuke down the boss. But she's not there yet. So she's below 10% now, so hopefully we can finish the boss off. But if not, when she spawns those crabs next time, we can just ignore them. And we can kill the boss. And she ended up surviving with 0.1% health, which is really sad. But she's one hit from dying. And shout out to Swizzy in the chat. He just got that Hydra Leather. And she enters Phase 3 Verzik. So at this point, she's going to choose a tank. And whoever she chooses can actually pass the tank by intentionally walking under her, which is what I'm showcasing right now. So I'm tank, but if I walk and stand underneath her for a couple attacks, she'll actually switch tanks. Look at that. So that's how you pass the tank. And now Cigar is the tank. So if you don't feel comfortable tanking Verzik, if you're worried about tanking Verzik, you can pass the tank to somebody else by simply standing underneath the boss for two or three of the boss's basic attacks. But let's talk about tanking. You can't be standing directly next to the boss in melee range when the boss attacks. You have to either be standing underneath her or uh, away from her. But this is webs. And you can see we're all web walking and there is a set pattern. So we always hit in that middle tile. We all run and hit on that middle tile. And we run and we hit on that middle tile, right? And if you're not in cycle with everyone else, if you fall out of pattern with everyone else, or you were off a tick, or you were late, or you were potentially early, um, it might be good, especially if everyone doesn't know how to catch themselves back up. Uh, it might be good to just get out of cycle, run to the perimeter, and just mage the boss down. Because if you're out of cycle with everyone else on webs, it can actually mess everyone else up and take massive damage and get stuck in webs. But when she does yellows, which she does right now, everyone has their own individual spot to stand on. So we run to that yellow. Everyone has their own pool. Don't accidentally steal someone else's pool. Otherwise, you both take massive damage. And when she gets below 20% health, she spawns those tornadoes. And at this point, you have to keep moving. You can never stop walking when those tornadoes are up. And this is the point where you want to be dropping claw specs. You want to be dropping all your special attacks. And if she throws that green orb on you, you want to get a 
above 75 health and run away from the team but the boss is down and at this point we finally get to go loot so let's go see what we get in the loot room and I'm gonna give you guys a surprise or I'm gonna give you guys a spoiler we actually have something coming and if you don't see a purple chest right now you can almost guess what it is check it out in the chat boys give Kimbo that shout out because he just pulled his fifth his fifth theater of blood pet in only 167 KC, it's absolutely wild. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I don't know if I should be congrats on Kimbo or giving him a big fat rip, but Kimbo just pulled his fifth theater of blood pet in only 167 KC. But grats to Kimbo. Big shout out to the boys. Thanks a lot for coming with me and helping me make this guide. Uh, thanks for coming in the budget gear. I know that it was a little bit of a stretch to make everyone come with only 500 mil gear, but I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys learned a ton. And I hope you guys got to see how the melee DPS role is done in the Theater of Blood. And I hope you had fun. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.